Welcome to the Daily Brief, where I'll go over the action in the market for Tuesday, March 7th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, March 8th. We had a pretty significant down day. You can pretty much attribute this to the comments that Chairperson Powell said. Right after his prepared remarks were released, the market got wind of what he was saying and immediately shot lower, and we never looked back for the rest of the day. This has turned things back more to negative, naturally. A lot of the repairing that we had been seeing with the market showing some support and actually trying to go higher, that's pretty much been wiped out now. So we're looking at more of a negative stance overall. So let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a flat open. The markets knew that Chairperson Powell was going to be speaking, so there wasn't a real gap up or down. Right after his prepared notes were released, we quickly declined below S1 at 4036 and also S2 at 4023. As the day went on, prices ended up chopping lower down below S3 at 3989 and closed slightly off of the low. We were down 1.53% on below average volume. That is still continuing. The technicals, as I said, have switched back more to negative. We still have some positive areas, so we're kind of mixed in some sense, but we're looking a lot more negative than we were after Monday's session because of this inflation and interest rate scenario. Here's the intraday chart showing how we had pretty much of a flat open. The notes came out, boom, we shot below S1, S2, tried to bounce back up a little bit, but that really didn't take. We got back up to S1, but then fell back below S2, chopped all around as we went lower, broke below S3, and then came up a little bit off of the low, slightly below S3. What are some comments that we can make? The market shifted negative after the release of the prepared comments, as I've stated a few times now. The market had been accounting for rate moves higher because of the employment report that came out last February, and we're getting the next report this coming Friday. The market is really anticipating that. But as Chairperson Powell was talking, he said that maybe we've underestimated the terminal rate, and we might need to raise rates 50 basis points at the upcoming meeting on the 22nd of March. So what this has done is it's increased the terminal rate where the Fed will stop raising rates. It had been at five and a quarter to five and a half. Now that shot up to five and a half to five and three quarters. During the day, the S&P did lose its 50 day moving average at 39.94. Growth did outperform value. Both were down overall, but growth was down less. On an intermediate term basis, our PMO study, which was starting to show some improvement, well, with Tuesday's decline, we're now looking extreme negative, and I'll show you that chart. The dollar was up pretty strong. It likes the idea that interest rates may be raised in the future. It costs more to get dollars, and interest rates also shot back up. So both of these together produced a lot of headwinds for stocks. We still have all of our yield curves that remain inverted. Sentiment is still at neutral. We're at 48, where we had been at 53. We're kind of tipping a little bit more to the side of negative. Our trend is still positive. The green line's still on top, but it's really coming down, and the red line's really going back up, and I'll show you that chart. We are below 20. I've switched our bias to negative with the down day. I've kept our momentum at mixed, because we might have overdone it a little bit on a short-term basis. Looking at the reports that came out, we had wholesale inventories were down 0.4% as expected. Last time, they were up 0.1%. Consumer credit increased by $14.8 billion, which may seem like a lot, but they expected it to be up $22.9 billion. Last time, it was up $10.6 billion. People are adding to their credit. They're using their credit cards just to live off of. But with rates going up and up and up, it's really deterring a lot of folks from using more credit. Here are some of the comments that he made, and I'm just quoting all of this. It says, although inflation is moderated in recent months, the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go and is likely to be bumpy. As I mentioned, the latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be higher than previously anticipated. If the totality of the data were to indicate that faster tightening is warranted, we would be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. The market didn't like that. Restoring price stability will likely require that we maintain a restrictive stance of monetary policy for some time. They didn't like that either. During his question and answer session, he added that the economic data thus far doesn't suggest that the Fed has over-tightened. That's the fear. That would produce a hard landing by kicking the economy into a recession. Indeed, the data suggests that the Fed has more work to do. 
He also acknowledged that it is likely that the ultimate rate the Fed writes down in its summary of economic projections at the March meeting is likely to be higher than it was in December. Just to give you an idea, this is where we stood after Friday's close. And this is the chart that I used in the weekly video, and I usually only cover this in the weekly video, where we had a 71.6% chance that we would go up 25 basis points to 4 and 3 quarters to 5%. There was 28% that believed we were going to go up 50 basis points. This is how it looked after the market closed on Tuesday. There's only 28% chance saying that we'll have a 25 basis point hike, and now there's a 72% chance that we'll have a 50 basis point hike. Looking at our ulcer index, it's still above the moving average and going up slightly as the market has been coming down, so that suggests that fear is increasing as far as this indicator is concerned. But when you look at the VIX, yeah, we went up, but we're still well below 20. We're well below the moving averages. It's still showing that there's a lot of complacency in the market. And the VIX of the VIX did tick up just a little bit on the bar chart as well as on the line chart. So volatility picked up slightly. This looks at value versus growth where value for the large caps was down 1.68% where growth was down 1.41%. So they outperformed or were down less. And we see that pretty much across the board with the mid caps. Small caps were more even but still growth outperformed just slightly. This is what I'm talking about on a one day basis from Monday to Tuesday. The advanced decline ratio was really extreme negative, so we might have gone down a little too far too fast. Doesn't mean that we'll stop going down, it just means that we may not continue to go down as fast as we once were going down, or we might even see a bit of a bounce. I showed this in yesterday's video, and it was a little hard to see, but we came right up to this anchored moving average going back to the all-time high. We hit that as resistance, and we've been coming back down. Also, I showed this, we came right up to the 20 period simple moving average of the high. We hit that resistance and have been coming back down. The force index, which had been positive, has now switched over to negative, and this is a short term indicator. Here's our ADX showing the condition of our trend where it's continuing to fall. The ADX is just going down, down, down. It's well below the moving average. It had looked like it was trying to turn back up, but after Tuesday's session, that wasn't happening. The green line is still on top, but it's declining as the red line is going up. So we may see a cross very soon if there's continued weakness. The daily chart shows how we lost this pivot level, came down, and we also lost the 50 period moving average. And at the bottom, you see where volume continues to be below average. The stochastics are negative in the short term, where they've turned back down. They're rolling over in the intermediate term. And they look like they were turning back positive in the long term, but now they could be beginning to roll over again. We closed during Monday's session right below the 20-day simple moving average. Well, we lost both of the 20-period moving averages. So on a short-term basis, this has turned things back negative. Here's the 50-period moving average where we lost that as well. That's turned it more negative in the intermediate term. And then this is also an intermediate term where we're still above the 100-day simple and exponential moving averages. Will that provide some kind of support? Here's our moving average tree showing how we're coming back down into the tree itself as we try to battle through this spaghetti mess. Looking at our oscillators, we had been trying to turn up with the slope. Well, that's now in jeopardy. The TSI hadn't crossed yet, but it's now starting to roll over. Intermediate term, we're still negative even though these are showing some improvement. But in the longer term, the oscillators continue to be down. Parabolic SAR, this continues to be positive. This is one of the drawbacks. This is great when you're trending in a particular direction, and this gives you a signal. When you get a signal and then it goes counter trend to what it's telling you, that can produce some pretty significant drawdowns, which can be very stressful. So as we're chopping around, we'll want to see if we continue to go lower, is the dot going to go back up on top? We're seeing a dot on top for the weekly chart. Now we're waiting to see on the daily chart, is that going to shift over more negative as well? The chicken oscillator is below zero and declining, so that's negative. And this is intermediate term. Here's our PMO study where we were looking a lot better with the PMOs that were rising. Now we're extreme negative. We were coming out of the buy signals being extreme negative, but that is now flat to turning down. And we continue to decline with the PMOs that are above zero. So this is more negative in the intermediate term. Swellen trading oscillator. After giving us some support and getting above zero, it's now turning down based on price and volume. The BPI hasn't moved all that much. It's still a little bit above 50, so that's positive. 
but we want to see if we break to the upside or to the downside, are we going to change the BPI readings? The NYSE BPI didn't move all that much either after breaking out and coming back down. It's been chopping around the last few days. The chicken money flow has now dropped below zero, so this is more negative. Balance of power continues to be negative. The TTM squeeze, which looked like it was trying to improve a little bit, has now turned back to the solid red bar and is declining, so that's negative. And our go no go system has now generated two no goes, which means sell, which is negative. Looking at our short term fib level, we did fall back down below this 4007 level. And on the short term basis, we don't have more short term fib support until we get to the 3908 level. Intermediate term, we broke down below this 3998. You could round it up to kind of 4000. So we broke down below that. If we try to come back up, the 4,000 level may act as resistance. Then longer term, we already broke down below this 4020 level. The next level down here is about the 3826 level. Our Ichimoku cloud thought this had gone away for a while. We were coming back up after providing support. Now we're starting to come back down into this green cloud. If we continue to fall, will this provide support? The Elder Impulse system for the S&P has now switched to negative. Our McClellan Oscillator, after coming above zero, has now dropped below zero, so that's negative. And the NYSE McClellan Oscillator never did get to zero and is still showing continued weakness. The Summation Index, based on price and volume, continued to decline. We're still above zero based on price, but we've dropped below based on volume. We were turning back up, and sometimes that's a leading indicator for us. Well, that didn't happen this time. New highs, new lows, not really seeing much of anything. A little bit of a breakout in new highs as well as new lows. We're trying to turn back up with our five period moving average and we're going up to sideways more or less with our 10 period moving average. The advanced decline line still remains positive. We're above both of these moving averages, but we are declining. The advanced decline ratio has now dropped below zero, so that's more negative. And accumulation distribution, which had been hanging in there, has now dropped below the moving average. So this is turning back more to negative. And this also shows how volume continues to drop off overall. The Dow, after getting up to its 50 period moving average, that hit resistance, it's now coming back down below the pivot. We still have the 200 day moving average below current prices, which may provide support if we continue to fall. And the diamonds have now switched over to negative. The NASDAQ also tried to get above this pivot level, but has now broken down below it. We still have the 50 period moving average below current price, which may provide support. And we're seeing a very similar picture with the NASDAQ 100 below the pivot, still above the 50 period moving average. The Qs have switched back to neutral and small caps, which really have had a couple of really bad days after hitting this pivot level have just come back down. The small caps have fallen below their 50 period moving average. So the elder impulse for the small caps continues to be negative. The small cap ratio continues to break down even though it's still in an overall uptrend. The mid caps also hit this pivot level and are coming down, but we're still above this 50 period moving average. That may provide some support. The mid caps have also switched back to negative for the elder impulse. The Russell, which had been dancing around this support level, continues to be below it. And we have the 50 period moving average just about at where current prices are at. On top, the RSI is below 50 and declining, and we also have a declining MACD. This is another concern that's suggesting there's some weakness coming into the market, is looking at the home builders. Where we're going down with the S&P, the home builders are also going down, but you can see our ratio is continuing to go down, and the relationship is starting to trail off. When we really get nervous about this is when we fall all the way down below this zero line, and that just shows that there's a pure divergence going on between the home builders and the S&P. We want them to be going in the same general direction, and that's starting to break apart a bit. So we'll keep watching this. 10-year bond yield ticked up slightly. The shorter term maturities are what really kicked up, and a lot of those are over 5% now. Where our longer term bonds were kind of unchanged. In fact, I think the 10 year and the 30 year might have even been up slightly. Then here's the 10 year bond price where it's pretty much been chopping sideways. It's the shorter term maturities that are really jockeying around. The dollar had a strong day. It's back up into the 105.59 range. And then looking at our long term analysis, this is a chart that I brought out over the weekend. I also talked about this in yesterday's video. It looks like 
we're breaking above this downward sloping trend line. Is that a fake out or is this legitimate? The scenario has been, when you look at times past, the MACD never got back up to the zero line. Well, it did get up to the zero line here, so that's suggesting some strength. But if this rolls over and goes below the blue line, that could suggest that this may be a false breakout. Updating our possible positive scenarios, you can see the two-year is now at 5% and it's continuing to spike up. But our ratio between the staples and S&P 500 continues to hold up, but it's not giving an awful lot of support to price. We're having all this trouble when normally when this generates some kind of a signal, we see really good price action from that. So what's our outlook for Wednesday? Fed Chair Powell will continue to give his testimony on Wednesday. The prepared comments will be the same. It'll be the Q&A where there might be some variations. And then on Friday, we have the employment situation report coming out. The technicals are now back to negative. There's a few areas that could recoup, like our ADX still has the green line on top. There's still a couple of areas that look okay, but there's a real disintegration going on currently. We have the weekly MBA mortgage index coming out, as well as the ADP employment change and the trade balance, as well as the jolt job openings. And then the whole list of geopolitical events, but the market's still fixated on inflation and interest rates. As I stated earlier, Fed Chair Powell gave his testimony on Tuesday. He will continue to do that on Wednesday. And then Thursday, Vice Chair Barr will be giving a talk on crypto. Looking at our Stock Traders Almanac statistics, not very good for March 8th. We're negative to neutral pretty much across the board with the Dow being up less than 50%. The S&P and the NASDAQ are weaker, only up 42.9% of the time. And then all the other things that still suggest that we have some positive backdrop happening right now, but we need to see follow through with price. Here is trading day number six, where the green line, and it's kind of hard to see because it's right on top of some of the other lines. The green line is the S&P in a pre-election year, which is where we're at right now. That continues to decline from day five to day six and into day seven. But we're still in this overall positive seasonality for the month of March in a pre-election year after we've had a bear market in the midterm year, which is exactly what we had. And this is also showing that we are in the sweet spot right now if the S&P is going to continue to go higher, but we're just not seeing that yet. So our scenarios, technicals are negative, but we're not trending right now. And we can't go with the up one because things are turning back much more negative. And we continue to go with the sideways scenario because the ADX is weakening, it's below 20. The green line, even though it's on top, is coming down pretty quickly. So our conclusion, the S&P is negative, short-term negative, intermediate-term negative, long-term we're still positive as long as we're above the 200-day simple moving average, and we had a recent golden cross. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. We'll fall back and regroup after Wednesday's session and see if things improve or if they continue to deteriorate or if we end up going sideways. If we do have a pretty much unchanged day, it's probably going to shift things back a little bit more negative because there'll be some carryover momentum in some of our indicators. So have a great day and I will talk to you in the next video.